I want to make sure you have a clear understanding of how linear functions work and some of the essential components of them. Number one, number one, you must have your equation written in slope intercept form. Just hands down first step. So whenever you are given an equation, make sure it's in slope intercept form and if it's not, you convert it. Because then at that point you are given your slope and you're given your y intercept. And your y intercept intercept is your starting point on a graph. So if you actually had to plot this out, where are you going to start? Your y intercept, where your line crosses or hits on the y axis is where you start. Then you go and look at the slope, and that tells you where you go from that starting point. So if you don't have an equation in that format, you don't know where to start, and you don't know where to go from there. So let's look at something like this. 75x minus y equals 450. Now this is not written in slope-intercept form, even though we have a y by itself, we have an x term, we have a non-x term, but they're not in the correct format, so they need to be moved around so that we are making sure that the signs on whatever our values are, are correct. So I have to consider, I need to isolate y. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. I need the y by itself. What's in the way of that? 75x. Now, because I'm not trying to separate the 75 from the x, I'm not doing any division here. I just have a positive value, and I need to subtract it and move it over. So I subtract 75x from both sides. That cancels out there. So I have a negative y equals negative 75x plus 450. Now, if you notice, there's a negative sign on that. Ooh, we don't want those. You cannot have a negative sign on your isolated variable. So how do we get rid of it? We find the inverse of everything. And to do that, you just wrap your entire equation in parentheses and put a negative on the outside of that. That is saying the inverse or the opposite of everything that follows. Opposite of negative y, positive y. Opposite of negative 75x, positive 75x. Opposite of 450, negative 450. This now tells me how to graph this equation. I need to start at negative 450 on the y-axis, so I'm going to be below the x-axis. And then from that point, every value I go up in, one, in x, I move up 75 on the y. So my slope is 75 over 1. So I go up 75 over 1, up 75 over 1. So start with slope-intercept form. And then um, sometimes you might not actually have this, and you have to create your own equation, which is not too hard to do. And we'll take a look at that. So if we have a graph here, um, <laughs> pretend these are straight lines, uh, and I don't have an equation of this, I can make one by just looking at the details that are provided. So the x-axis has minutes, the y-axis has volume. Where do I start at? I start at, well, every other line is labeled, and if it's in increments of 400, but there's a space in between, guess what? Each line is worth 200. So where am I starting at? When is x zero? y is 200. So for my mx plus b, I would have 200 be my y-axis, and it's a or my y-intercept, and I know it's positive, so I can do that. Now, what's my slope? Well, if I look at this, I go up one line and over one line. But what's each one line worth? Each line is worth 200, and then what is each line on the x-axis in increments of? It's in increments of two. So I have. I have a change in 200 for y for every change in 2x. Well, what does that simplify to? 100. So that means I have a slope of 100. I have a change in 100 in volume for every minute that passes. So when I plug in the number of minutes, I can calculate it to find out what my volume quantity is. So um, it didn't really, I don't really have an x here, so we just have y equals 100x plus 200. 
So that is how you can just, looking at a graph, create an equation of the line. So the next thing we want to look at is domain and range and what that means. So if I'm asked to identify the domain and the range of my graph, what, I'm, what that's asking for is what is the whole scope of x values that are covered in my graph and what is the whole range of y values that are in my graph, okay? So in looking at a graph, we have to figure out what's the lowest, we'll start with the lowest x value. What's the lowest x value? Well, no minutes having passed. So the way we do this is in set builder notation, which is, we have the, the fancy braces, we'll, we'll pretend that's a, a good squiggly brace, and just saying x is all values that make 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to, so now we have a minimum, we have to establish what was our maximum x value, how far did we go? Well, according to this graph, we went up to 16 for the x, and so as a value to plug into the equation that we had made, all the numbers that we can possibly plug in for x and have a corresponding answer to fall between 0 and 16. And it can also include 0 and 16. So this is how we establish what is the domain of our graph. And then we look at, well, what is then the corresponding y? If, these, if my x's fall into here, this range, and that input creates an output, what is the range of output values? So we look at, again, we do our squiggly brace. Y is all values that make, well, did we start at zero? No, we started at 200. So 200 was the minimum Y value that we had. So 200 is less than or equal to Y, which is less than or equal to, now we have to establish, well, what was our maximum Y based on our inputs of X? Well, I had 16 for X, and that led to 200 more than 1600, which is, 1800. So each one of these y values that falls in here matches with some sort of x value up here or vice versa. Some x value up here corresponds to some y value falling in between this range. So this is the proper way to establish what your domain and range is, but if you at least have the inequalities, that's fine. You will sometimes experience a thing where there is no limit. There's only a minimum. So like if you have a company and you're producing t-shirts, well, if you're a good company, you don't want there to be a limit. Uh, so at that point, all you have is a minimum. So your domain would be anything zero is less than or equal to X. And that's just saying x is either 0 or anything greater than that. And then that can also influence what your y is going to be. Usually you have a minimum cost for just starting your business. So that's going to be your minimum is less than or equal to y. And that's just saying because I have no limit to x, I'm not going to have a limit to y. Uh, but uh, if you don't have an open-ended like that, you do need to say what your minimum and maximums are for your different x and y values.